you know, there's, there's one thing to deal with customer service. It's another thing to do to, to activate new leads and to actually increase your, your, uh, you know, your uh, ability to convert people into, into revenue. There's also an opportunity to actually expand your business by creating new, new business opportunities. All of this comes from a commitment to community. This is not necessarily something you want to outsource always. You know, when you insource it, at least you know who they are. When you outsource it, it's like writing a blank check. Um, and you know, it has benefits. I mean, uh, I sit in, uh, Zula in New York sits inside of YNR in New York City. And uh, for the last two summers, my, my have twin sons and uh, they've been interning at YNR. And what I find very interesting is that for the summer, YNR has wonderful interns from all across America who come in to intern. And these kids get social and they're put on certain key accounts. And um, no one wants to talk about it publicly, but when they lose these uh, summer interns, they actually lose a lot about the ability to connect to, 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 on a brand level because these kids get it. And, and some people who are older, it's, you know, they, 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 they understand that, but they're not doing it. And so um, I'm just wondering amongst you guys, I mean, are, are you, do you, I mean, do you find community to be important? Do you find something, you know, is something that you're personally doing and how do you, if, if people, to the people that are in this audience who are not doing community, who don't have an active community manager, what's your advice? So maybe Carol. Um, so, first of all, I'd like to say, um, I'd like to reinforce something that Jeff said really early on from the start of the panel, and that connects to the notion of community. Um, all of us sitting in this room, I'm assuming all, social media advocates, right? The question in the panel was, have we reached the summit? Of course, working for LinkedIn, I can tell you it's only the beginning. That's my uh, impression. And the one, the one thing that really inspired me right from the beginning of this panel is what uh, Ta said presenting Jeff. Um, she said, Jeff is someone that, who inspires me. And Jeff mentioned the return on, inv on inspiration which made every one of you smile. I, th I, I believe that. I know you do. I know you do. And um, one of the things uh, going forward that will matter to all of us, whether we manage community or not, uh, to me, boils down to exactly what's been said about inspiration. It's, uh, it, it's going to be, when you manage a community, to me, it's going to be about how much inspiration that you are providing. And... And that comes from your personal experience on social media. When you look at it, social media is only seven years. I mean, LinkedIn is 10 years. But the social media being mainstream in everyday lives, it's seven years, right? So when you, look at, when you think about it, this phenomenon of social media has enabled us from a personal point of view to understand what are the benefits of social media. It's not up to us as individuals who work for companies to leverage that experience and, and make make that experience beneficial for our brands and our companies. And inspiration for me is the top thing that we have to keep in mind when we manage community. There's a second thing, which to me is gonna be really visible in the next uh, 10 years, is that relationships matter. So when Jeff mentioned a few examples about his experience online and his uh, uh, journey in the past year, what matters at a personal level will matter at a company level as well. So at LinkedIn, we uh, have as a mantra that relationships matter because our entire product uh, spectrum is built around relationships, right? So now, going forward, when you're going to call people to, uh, to place a sales call, you're not just going to call people cold, right? You're going to leverage your network and see who you know from this company who might be a good introduction to the person you want to talk to. And that's how two things from a personal experience, inspiration, providing inspiration, and understanding that relationships matter, will translate into the world of companies and how companies can leverage going forward to make sure the community stays alive. I don't know if you would agree. No, I, I, I hear you, and I, I do believe it matters a lot. I think the... the but it's perspective, too, because some people instance, instantly get it, feel it, know it, and other people have to learn it sometimes by, through trial and error. But I, I do think at the end of the day, you know, relationships matter. I think they always have. That, that's sort of, you know, for me, it's like I, I don't really joke about the fact that, you know, social media to me, I, I do believe that prehistoric cave drawings is an example of social media. Granted, it's very hard to share those drawings, uh, but we see them now. Um, and, you know, when I remember growing up in the 80s when I was dating, 
I'd meet somebody and listen to the music that they like, and I used to make mixtapes and share them. And that was my example of being social with media. And, you know, and, and I do those things today, and I think that there's two th it's not really conflicting, but on, on one level, I think the world of social media has opened up and brought the world closer. You know, on, on a technical level, we have 7.3, 7.4 billion people on Earth now. Um, I'm just curious, in the last year, ha have any of you who are active on Facebook or Twitter or some social network have seen a, a status update from a friend and felt an emotional response based on, their fe based on what you read? Any of you? Right? And those of you maybe not be alive. Okay. Um, the thing is, something magical is going on if we're able to use the internet and to share and express and connect on an emotional level. It's different. We've never had that before, ever. We're able to connect people. And so, you know, in many countries which don't have even good telephone service, they have connected, people are connected. And we're living in a world right now where on a human level we have a chance to connect the souls of many more people together now than ever before in our history. And my fundamental belief is that social, the activation of social has a chance to bring people, doesn't matter, non-denominational, doesn't matter who they are, where they are, where they're from, but as human beings we have a chance to feel, to connect, to share and engage in ways we never could before. And it's because of these platforms. And I believe that represents a, change, a very subtle change, whether it's spiritual, whatever you want to call it. But there's something that's happening deep inside that is changing everything else around us. And we may not see that effects for years, but the fact that we're able to convey emotions and feel those emotions. It's one thing to write something, but to feel it and to act on it is something which is very different. We've never really had that before. And I think that, that's a fundamental shift in how we all communicate, some of it intuitively, but some of it really emotionally, and some of it just, I don't know what to put it, but it's, it's something very interesting that's happening. And I think that, as a basis, then allows many other things to happen, because we're learning to feel as human beings. We're learning to share and express that we're not alone, that we're connected. You know, I, I, every time there's natural disasters, I almost feel like the world wakes up. And for many times, it doesn't matter where you're from, people kick in and they help, because they can. And this ability to feel and to share emotional, it's both grief and excitement. I mean, I, I, know I cry sometimes when I, I don't want to cry now, but I, 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 I feel the energy of stuff and I react to it emotionally when I read it. And I'm not alone. And so, and so also for tears of joy and being able to express that. And I think that, you know, if you're a clever marketer, if you could actually invoke emotions through social and, and connect the dots all the way around, pure magic, you know. In, in, in LA, I guess, so I don't know where, where Nelson, Nielsen is based, but you guys were talking about Twitter before. You know, in Israel, Twitter's not really a major player, but I thought it was really interesting that Nielsen ratings, which monitors uh, the popularity of television shows, they're finally now going to the Twitter sphere to actually rate, I think they should have done this seven years ago, or six years ago, but they're actually now rating TV shows, not so much on, on what viewership is, but what the Twitter response is, because people are reacting emotionally sometimes to what they're watching on TV. And I think it's a sort of a, a leading indicator that something else is going on. And uh, I'm, I mean, have you guys experienced this? Yes, yeah, so I really love what you're, where you're going with this because, you know, linking it back to the question of uh, yeah. the title of the panel, which is, have we reached the summit? The reality, if we're able to converse that emotion into action, you know, then we have, uh, I'm very hopeful about the future. You know, we say the future is doom and gloom and, you know, everything is fucked up. And the reality, no, it's not. Because for the first time, we have the ability through social communities to actually address some of the real challenges of the world. One of the panelists yesterday said one of the biggest problems of the world is that nobody is working on the biggest problems of the world. But, you know, thanks to community management, thanks to everything that's happening with social media, if you're able to turn these emotions into actions, then you can really address this. And more and more, I mean, the beauty of, of Unilever, I don't want to you know, publicize too much Unilever here, but we have you know, committed to uh, a, a lot on sustainable living on several of our brands. So for instance, we have a brand of soap called Lifeboy, which really, you know, basically, Lifeboy, it's called Lifeboy because it basically kills germs and uh, saves the lives of uh, lots of people, children in particular, you know, help them basically get through uh, the difficulties when you're a kid, you know, in some countries getting to the age of five. Well, through social media community management, you can engage people in actually knowing about it, caring about it, and doing something about it. It's pretty interesting if you see what's all about uh, the open data movement and the ideation uh, platform movement. It's the power of the crowd. You see what Austin City Hall, you see what Paris is doing with connection platform. They ask 
to people throughout a digital platform, what should we do with this bridge? What should we do with this place? And they ask the people to tell them what should they do. They, they use the power of the crowd. Inside our enterprise, inside many enterprises, social networks distracts the, bottom, the top to bottom approaches. And every employee, low base employee, can participate. Everybody can participate. It really destroys the, the, the top to bottom approaches, and it's cool. Because what happens is that everyone has a voice, and everyone's voice matters. And I think that's sort of the disruption that actually, when people realize that you democratize access to the people, and we're able to disintermediate the channels that pre-existed, that changes everything. And it's, it's that positive disruption that, that represents a, a force of nature, which, again, I think has always been there at some level, but the fact that we can connect communities together and people can realize they're not alone and... and you, know, you can take, you take this political, but I'm not going to, but just on, on an emotional side, you know, being able to um, invoke stuff. And the trouble with some of this is, particularly when you get emotional, is companies look for bottom lines. And for them, it's not inspiration, it's, it's return on investment. And I, I believe that, you know, and I dare not say something negative about some tech startups I know, but I don't believe the analytics exist yet to prove why we invest in social media. I think emotionally we understand it. I think we can see some bottom line indications why it makes sense. But there's a lot, and, and maybe, because when, when you're writing history, it's very hard to have a perspective while the history is happening to understand why we did things. You only could look back. It's hard to be in the stream of, of, of consciousness while it's happening. But I, I do believe that, that the real analytics that will prove the effectiveness of what we do are being created now. Because it's only after this phenomenon has started for seven years, whatever it is, we start to understand to show why we should invest in these things. Because in the early days, people that were early advertisers on these social platforms, because they went to the boss for a blank check, they got it. You know, the, the, the social companies benefited a lot, the companies not so much. But it's only now that we're starting to understand these dynamics. So you know, should you be making you know, a commitment of your marketing budget, you know, 100% of it to social, 50% to social, whatever, I don't know yet, but I, I do believe that we're not able yet to understand the effectiveness of where this is. We know that if we're not there, we feel like we're naked and bare, we should be there. But it's really more guidance by gut, not so much by numbers. And I think there's this balance between showing real, you know, because I believe in return on inspiration, return on innovation. ROI, the old ROI has been there, done that. But some companies, they want to see numbers. And, uh, you know, how do you, like, from a business side of it, how do you balance between spending the time on doing things that connect to the soul and you know that are moving communities to people who want to say, that's interesting, but show me bottom line results. How do you, how do you deal with that? Um, so as LinkedIn, I only am an observer of how brands deal with that. Uh, so to, to me, if we, if we look at it from a marketing perspective, all of us who've been working in marketing for more than 10 years, we all know that this is a really exciting time to be living because social allows us to do what marketing really is, which is a mix of art and, art and science, which is exactly what you described earlier. The art part is, is creating the emotion, right? Creating the bond and the relationships with our consumer, which, as we said, is becoming increasingly personal. Uh, the science part is the amount of data that we now have in order to create the most engaging experience at the right moment. If you think about it, what's the right time to advertise a new car? It may not necessarily be January because you decided it's gonna be January. Maybe the best moment to advertise a new car is gonna be three months after you signed up for a new job. Now with the amount of data, uh, which is 10 years worth of data, you can be uh, more relevant, more s you can be smarter in the moment you advertise and enabling data into your marketing strategy can create a better attention. Because as you all know, one of the critical challenges of marketeers is the, what we call the shortage of attention. There's been a lot of brain research about attention and I've seen a number of interesting pieces here during the Tel Aviv about measuring attention. With all these devices that are asking for our attention, with text messaging, asking us to reply instantly, right? Who's gonna wait 24 hours to reply to a text message, right? We have lots of things which calls for attention. The new challenge for marketeers is to be smarter by the right moment to talk to people. So blending art with science is gonna be creating the inspiration and creating the emotional bond as we described and leveraging data to talk at the right moment to the right people. And I'm, I'm giving you the car example because a typical, a typical
typically, typically a question that we're being asked and maintained by brands is when's the right moment to talk to people about cars, about new, new uh, banking accounts. And one of the examples that personally uh, I felt was one of the most successful case study of social media usage is actually from Dove, which made me really excited to see that Mark was on the panel today. Because Dove was overall one of uh, this year, 2013, biggest success in social media because it created the right mix between art and science, which is why, if you don't mind, Jeff, uh, if you don't mind, I would like Mark to tell the Dove story. I don't know how many of you have seen the Dove, Dove story. Only three, four people. Maybe worth showing it, Mark. So yeah, so you, you I mean, basically, what we did on Dove was uh, uh, on this whole, you know, basically, the strategy of the brand is uh, a lot to help women. Uh, deal with beauty uh, not as a source of anxiety but as a source of, uh, of confidence so uh, the whole uh, dealing with the issue of self-esteem and um, I'm actually surprised because there were you know several hundred million people who saw it uh, How many? several hundred million seven hundred million okay uh, several several, several hundred, hundred not seven sorry and uh, I'm surprised uh, that nobody saw this ad basically called sketches where you see uh, you know, a FBI um, artist sketching women and uh, women actually discovering the difference between uh, a portrait done uh, from their description of themselves or from the description of themselves by somebody who knows them. Um, very, very emotional response which, uh, which went in, in, uh, in just a few days, you know, global. Uh, on uh, and, and completely viral, so it really used the power of sharing. It was amazing to hear the way people actually were talking about how they encountered that uh, that piece of content. You know, sometimes a husband sharing it with a wife, a wife sharing it with a husband, because it was something that was no longer you know women you know looking at it themselves, but making a cultural conversation around self-esteem and, and beauty and confidence. How much, did it, how much did it cost to produce that video? Not that much. Not that much because the reality, it was a, a, piece, of, uh, a piece of content that, uh, that was done uh, uh, more of a social experiment to see, you know, if you asked women to describe themselves, um, you know, whether there was a, a risk that they would actually self, uh, you know, reduce through their own confidence, their own uh, self-esteem the way they look at themselves. There is a fundamental insight that, uh, you know, if uh, two women look at one another, they always find that uh, the other one is more beautiful than them. And, uh, of course, for guys, it's, uh, it's the opposite. But in terms of... <laughs> yeah. Um, but in terms of not... Is it millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars? I could just pull No, no, it's... I mean, I, I don't know that we've uh, disclosed any number, but... Well, no, cause uh, I, cause I, but no, it, it's... The, the issue is not the cost. No, no, because what happens, of course, after you run a campaign like that, how many people say now, I want my, my video... How, how often have you heard, I want my video to go viral? Yeah, yeah, and how so, many... And, and, how, and how often do you make videos viral, or is it something else? No, to me, the, the point is, that's why I'm saying it's not about the, the money, it's about the insight and making sure that you, you know, capture something uh, that's truthful before. And it's not, you know, Dove, Dove did it before, but before Dove embraced as a brand this issue of the fact that, you know, there is a growing concern, and I am a father of two daughters, and I saw them both when they were 14, 15, you know, going from the... Uh, you know, it's okay to take me, take a picture of me. To no, Dad, don't take a picture of me. Uh, and uh, so it's a real concern which we have created as a society. And until Dove embraced this issue of you know beauty having become uh, a more and more a source of anxiety, no brand, nobody, not just brand, nobody was having that conversation. 